To understand the do channel, we have to first look at what do means. The character do is translated as governing or governor. When we look at the character do, we get some details. At the bottom, we see an eye, and above it, we see hands that are collecting the beans or the peas or some sort of legume. Those together, the top part together, the beans and the hands, form the character Shu, an uncle, the younger brother of one's father. So when we refer to a governor, we mean that we are suggesting supervising the work, but also that we are somewhat inferior to the real big boss. A governor sounds like he is all-powerful, but he is still really under the command of the emperor. If I am Queen Victoria, I need a governor for India. I send out a loyal cousin who is good and efficient, but who will not take over the jewel of the crown and topple me over. That is a do. It looks like it is very powerful, but somehow the decisions are actually made above me. We have two systems in the body that comply with this idea the nervous system and the hormonal system. They both seem to be manipulating and controlling what the body does, but they do get their instructions from the brain. There is a clear relationship between the spine and the nervous system, so it is not surprising that the Chinese named the channel of the spine the Du Channel. Kiko likes to look at the character above the eye, the Shu character, as a stalk that supports the growth of the bean upwards, just as the spine does. She also refers to a quote in Zhuangzi 3 that says that because of the Du, there are meridians, Yan Du, Yin Wei Jing. The quote goes on to say that it makes it possible to defend my body, to give rise to all, to support my parents, and to complete my years or to complete my lifespan. We do want to recall that the Chuangzi is really not a medical text, so it is not likely to be referring to the Du Channel or the Meridians. Burton Watson's translation is, follow the middle, go by what is constant, and you can stay in one piece. Keep yourself alive, look after your parents, and live out your years. He renders Yuan Du Yin Wei Jing as being in accordance with our center. This is aligned with the context of the chapter, which starts by saying that life is short, but knowledge is limitless, and advises us against pursuing and striving. So again, we can see that we can derive ideas about the meridians from other sources and reinterpret those sources to match what we find is medically or clinically true for us. Obviously, we can look at the do as the central element, the central governance that nourishes life. We have seen that uprightness is the opposite of disease. Again, we did that through interpretation of non-medical texts, but with conformation of what is clinically applicable. The withering of the spine is old age and sickness. The maintaining of the spine's flexibility and ability to lengthen is central to health, physically, because it gives space to the organs and maintains a pliable nervous system, and also as a central axis in meditation. The spine has natural curves. Some of the most important points on the do, or the Watteau equivalents, are in places where those curves are the strongest. At L2, do 4, Ming Man, this is at the depth of the lordotic curve. It pushes us forward, hence the idea of moving towards a destiny. T11 or T12, do 6, Ji Zhang, the spinal center is where the curve changes from the lordotic towards the kyphotic. It is also where there is a change of vertebrae from lumbar type to thoracic types. So it is where the most people, there will be a downwards and often a backwards pull instead of a movement up and forwards. At T7, we have Du 9, Zhe Yang, and at T5, Du 11, 
Shandao. These are both areas that are at the height of the Kaifadi curve. At Du 14, the vertebrae changes from thoracic to cervical, again being less bound because there is no rib attachment. The neck has a curve also, in the same direction as the lordotic curve, but more subtle, and it ends at Du 16, Feng Fu, under the occiput, where many people will be breaking their head backwards from the neck. L5, which is not an official dew point, is another place where the vertebrae change, this time from sacral to lumbar. Again, from something that is bound, fused, the sacrum, to vertebrae that have more freedom, the lumbars. And like a dew 16, there is a tendency here to have a break rather than to maintain a flow upwards. The dew channel is extremely central for the health of our posture which means the health of our organs, because slumped posture means congested organs. Also, it is important for the health of the nervous system, and it is central to many meditation traditions. For me, the Do Channel suggests the process of establishing our posture in meditation, the upright, relaxed posture that then facilitates a relaxed yet attentive mind, and the point names will reflect that. Not every point conforms to this idea, and in fact, if we were to look at points for meditation, they should really be just in front of the spine and not behind it. So this idea is perhaps less than the ideal model. Du Wan is named Chang Chiang, the long and strong. The long is about time, duration. It is a person with long hair. There is a process of time to get to that length of hair sort of thing. Qiang, strong, powerful, shows an insect and a bow after it has been released, which means to expand, to enlarge. So Du Wan takes up the metaphor of the spine as a bow and as what maintains the length and the strength of life. In the same manner, Du 18, on the other side of the spine, also, past the actual spine, is named Jiang Jian, the strong space. So the spine is delineated on both ends with the idea of a bow that unleashes strength. I would have expected Du Tu, which is the first point on the spine, to have that kind of name, especially because Du Tu has the rather plain name of Yao Shu, the point for the lower back, and especially because clinically Du Tu really does affect the whole spine. However, Du Wan is part of the perineal floor, and that does tell us that the strength of the spine is rooted at the perineal floor. Our awareness and the lift of the perineal floor supports the spine. Du Tu is the first point that is actually on the spine in the space between the coccyx and the sacrum, and covering the sacrum. Its name, Yao Shu, the lumbar point, does suggest that it affects the whole spine, and therefore it affects the nervous system. If you stand up and tuck the tailbone in, then you stick the tailbone back out, you will feel the importance of the tailbone on our nervous system. When the tailbone is tucked under, the general feeling is more stationary, stuck, and the chest tends to become depressed. When we push the tailbone back and out, the body feels more energized, ready to go, to move forward. This demonstrates the contribution of the tailbone positioning to the balance between sympathetic, tailbone being pushed out, and parasympathetic, tailbone being tucked under, and the feedback between them. On the front, we see that liver 12, Ji Mai, the urgent pulse, and spleen 10, 12, Tong Men, the surging gait, are also part of the same pattern and are also involved with the balancing of the autonomic nervous system. When we tuck the tail under, we are pushing into the groin and the liver 12, spleen 12 area. The tailbone positioning also affects the alignment of the whole spine, and presumably that is reflected in its name the lumbar shoe. 
do too is a major treatment point for the autonomic nervous system and I tend to check it against pressure pain on the left inner border of the scapula, that is left UB43 area. The heart, with its pacemaker, is part of the autonomic nervous system. In TCM, DO2, of course, is famous for affecting epilepsy, again a conductivity issue in the brain, a manifestation of the nervous system. At L4, we see DO3, Yao Yang Guan, the lumbar Yang gate. Guan re implies an obstacle, not simply a gate. You might call it a checkpoint rather than a gate. Inside the gate character, there are silk threads, so the passage is not clear. In Guan, there is some sort of obstacle to get through the gate. At L2, we now arrive at Du Four, Ming Men. This is a plain gate. Clearly no checkpoints here. Ming is the decree, the fate of life. It has the mouth and to assemble and a seal. This is the place where we tend to push forward in life in our spine. It is pu If it is pushed too much, it creates havoc because we're not staying with our center and are pu but are pushing out, projecting. When we look at this from a meditation posture, we want to keep having movement upwards, initiated by an opening or an awareness of the perineal cavity. But in the lumbar area, we want to avoid too strong a movement forward. If we push towards the lumbar spine, physically, we narrow the lumbar area and we squeeze the adrenals. The effect on the nervous system is to push us towards a sympathetic state a fight-or-flight state of the nervous system. We want Ming Man and the lumbar spine to remain wide and open, not pushed forward, not exaggerating the lordotic curve, yet maintaining upwardness in it. At L1 is the suspended pivot, Xuan Shu, Du 5. For many people, when they bend forward, this may be the highest point, so it can appear that this is where the body hangs from, a pivot for hanging. In SU-160, the Du channel is described as entering the kidney twice, once as it travels up the spine, and then it goes all the way up to the eyes, penetrating the brain, then it goes down through the inner border of the scapula to the waist and enters the kidneys again. Of course, we assume that would be at Ming Men, do four. But there is no point given, and since the kidneys are also at the level with L1, it is possible that the axis of this up and down movement as it enters and comes out of the kidneys is what do five is referring to by being a suspended pivot. Now we arrive at another major axis on the spine, T11. This is Ji Zhang, the center of the spine. Here, there is a switch, not just from lumbar to thoracic, from vertebrae that can move with greater ease to ones bound by the ribs, but also from the lumbar region, which tend to get pushed forward, to the, low, to the lower thoracics, which tend to get pushed down and back. There's a change from the lordotic curve to the kyphotic curve. The weight of the mid-thoracics tends to get pushed down into T11, T12 line. This is where the lordotic curve changes into the kyphotic one. Many people will have gummy extra tissue attached to the spine in this area, especially diabetics and people susceptible to sugar problems. They may not eat sugar per se, but they often are addicted to carbs and therefore avoid carbs because they know that if they eat too many carbs, they'll have, say, headaches or something like that. Needling into this extra tissue is something I use a lot for diabetics and people with sugar problems, as well as people with muscle spasms, and for any kind of spinal problem. Because whenever there is either a change in a curve or the height of the curve, that will affect the rest of the bow, and that has more bang for your buck, so to speak. Therefore, the deepest parts of the curve, L2, and T7 and T5, 
and the places where the curve changes, T11, T12, and T2, T3, tend to have a strong effect on the whole spine. This is why I use all of these points in hypothyroidism. We can say that a weak thyroid, hypothyroid, is a yang deficiency. If we want to systematically reinforce yang, we would want to activate the sea of yang, the dew channel. Hence the treatment for hypothyroid patients on the back is dew 2, T11-12, T7, and T5. All the points that activate the spine, the dew, due to their position on the curve. I actually look for changes in the curve more than I look for the exact vertebrae number. And I also look for either gumminess on the side of the spine or for vertebrae that are very closely squeezed together. I tend to needle the Watteaus rather than the dew points. I needle the Watteaus 45 degrees towards the spine and or 45 degrees up um, towards dew 16. This point combination is not, not reserved only for hypothyroid types. In fact, I use it on almost all patients because it activates the spine so it tones the nervous system as well as the posture. L2 should be part of this combination because it is the deepest point of the lordotic curve. But I find that I prefer needling bladder 52 towards the spine instead. This is a way to activate the kidneys and adjust the adrenals, which do 4 does not seem to offer as clearly as bladder 52. People who have depression also often have the physical pushing down at T11, T12. We can say that the spleen yang is not rising in TCM terms. For that type patient, though, I will use T11, T12 needled 45 degrees towards the spine and upwards, and I will also use the area of bladder 49 and needle it upwards. Bladder 49 is yi shi, the abode of the yi, the consciousness, hence its use in depression, and the location at the base of the muscles of the ribs sends a signal to lift the back of the ribs up rather than to allow them to slump down. At T10, we have Zhang Shu, Du 7, the central axis. And at T9, Du 8, we have Jin Su, the ligament shrinking. I do not have much in terms of commentary on these two points, and the names do not fit our theme, though one can make the point that they are basically a continuation of the theme of Du 6, the center of the spine, creating an upward movement, and by twisting it a bit, we can say that if we push into the center too much, we might get a contracture, a shrinkage, the name of Du 8. This is where I accept that there are point names that I do not immediately understand. And this may be because the theme I'm working with was not the one that those who named the points were working with. This does not necessarily make my view invalid. Um, it just makes it not as complete as I might like it to be. Um, and it's always worth re-examining. Nagano used do 8 for bedwetting, especially in children, and I have used it with some success for that, and also found adult patients who are bedwetters through relatively older ages to have curve abnormalities in this area, even clear scoliosis. So there seems to be some connection that I am aware of, but I'm unable to explain between um, do 8 or T9 and the bladder or the sphincter. One might say that the name Jin Sur, ligament shrinking, can suggest that somehow we can strengthen the ability of a sphincter to hold, to shrink, by using Du 8. We can also look at the character Sur to shrink and see that it is composed of the character for silk and the character for night, Xiu, which means to stay overnight. What exactly did the ancients see here? And how did Nagano arrive at the connection between T9 and childhood bedwetting is still a mystery. For the meditator, here is where we get to the thick of things. 
In the lower ribs, the movement is down and it is enforced by gravity. From T7, it is not so much that the ribs are falling down as much as that there is no up movement. This area tends to be much tighter and less pliable, so the movement of the spine is much more restricted than in the lower thoracics. Think of the tendency to open the chest by pushing the shoulder blades together and puffing the front of the chest. This is the natural tendency of almost all people to counteract a slumped posture, a military posture, taking on a military posture by squeezing the shoulder blades together. But in actuality, all we did is expand the front while contracting the back. We really did not open the rib cage. We only changed orientation. Most of us will expand the lower ribs and not have much movement in the upper ribs. Again, because the lower ribs are easier to move. And with that movement tends to come an exaggerated lordotic curve. Plying out the area between T7 and T1 is something that meditators and yogis are very aware of, trying to move the energy all the way up the spine, knowing there tends to be stuck spots in the upper thoracics, where one is able to, when one is able to move the upper thoracic spine forward and up without contracting the rhomboids or pushing out the front ribs, Space is created in the chest cavity, the breathing gets smoothed out, and the mind sinks into greater calmness. T7, Du Nain, Zhe Yang, arriving Yang, begins this process. Our journey is up the spine towards Yang. Arriving here does not mean the end of the story. Zhe is a bird swooping towards the ground. Arriving is a movement. It is not some static end position. One aims at a constant awareness here. When that happens, the top intercostals release and open without sticking out the ribs. Stomach 15, Wu Yi, in the second intercostal, has a resonance by name with Du 9. Wu has Zhe to arrive in it with a roof over it. T7, Du 9, is where we push up to Yang, because it tends to be part of the extreme phase of the kyphotic curve. It has the effect on the whole spine. Because it affects the ribs, it affects the nervous system. The T7 line is a very strong area reflecting and affecting the nervous system. On the bladder line, we have at the same level Ge Shu and Ge Guan the diaphragm shoe and the diaphragm gate, and the diaphragm strongly affects the nervous system. Now that the movement upwards in the spine has been initiated, the spirit, or the soul, has a platform. This is T6, Du Ten, Ling Tai. Tai is a platform. The character used is basically the mouth exhaling in joy, and when it's pronounced yi, it means happy. When pronounced tai, it means a platform. The top part in tai is to stop already. So although it is altered, looking a little bit different, so it has a very similar theme as do nine, arriving yang. This tai is actually the simplified character for tai, tower, where the bottom part of the character is actually to arrive, zhe, as in zhe yang. So this is really a continuation of the theme of du nine, zhe yang, the theme of the upper thoracics having the capacity to push us up without contracting the back, maintaining an upward movement while maintaining width between the shoulder blades. T5 is a continuation of the same idea, now developed to suggest that the spirit has freedom, has joy. Du 11 is named Shen Dao, the pathway of the Shen. These three points, T7 to T5, or Du 9 to Du 11, are all part of the apex of the kyphotic curve, and in that respect, they are almost like a group. 
The next point is at T3, Du 12, Shen Jiu, the body pillar, still expressing the same idea of supporting the spine in its movement up so as to open the chest and free the mind, the spirit. Du 12 is also named Qi Li, the awareness benefiting. It is a bit far-fetched to suggest that ex external manipulation such as needling on Du 12 brings knowledge or awareness, benefits the awareness. But, as in, in the rest, with the rest of these points, we can see that the activation of this area is part of the internal process that one goes through in establishing the body in meditation and the effect that has on the mind. We also see the effect the area has on the spine in general. Therefore, it also supports the, sp the spine and the posture or the body. It is a pillar for the body, especially for the neck. And T3 or Du12 is a point that is used to support the spine, to support life, the self, the center, especially the neck. At T1, we encounter Du13, Tao Dao, the happy path. Ellis translates Tao as a kiln, a furnace for making pottery. The right part of the character is indeed a furnace. When you add the hill character to the left of it, we can render it either as happy or as pottery, but not as an oven anymore. For me, the idea of a path for pottery does not quite jive, while happy still fits with my scheme. But in truth, this is not the kind of happy that we might associate with meditation. This is not bliss. It is more of a sensation. For example, we have expressions like um, Tao Tui, uh, to be infatuated or drunk, or Xun Tao, to influence or permeate, Xun being smoke. So I think the suggestion here, rather than happiness, is that at C7 and T1 there is a spreading sensation out to the shoulders and the arms. For example, warming this area warms the hands which is a cool, or perhaps rather a warm, trick for Renaud's patients. It is also an area that affects coughing and aches in the upper back, as in wind cold. So I think that Tao in Du 13 may have been a reference to that spreading capacity of the area. Du 14, Da Zui, the great hammer, does not connote the same thing. It is likely that Du 14 was named and used as a landmark before other points, and its name was well established as a landmark, and the other points were named later with other influences in mind. Du 15, Yamen, the mute gate, has a number of other names, all involving the tongue, including the root of the tongue, Shigen. It is a way to access the tongue from the neck, whether for speech issues, sleep apnea, or for moistening or producing more saliva. And the main point in this area is Feng Fu, Du 16, the place where wind is being exchanged. Fu, a palace, is a building where payments or deliveries are being made. When the occiput allows the head to bend back, creating a break in the occiput, the thoughts tend to wander. Meditators will experience this as daydreaming, indulging. One of the ways to bring back concentration is to lengthen the back of the neck, releasing the flow from the spine to the brain. The whole occipital area has a relationship to wind, not just as external wind invasion, but in the capacity of the occiput to create a settled mind or to agitate the mind. Hence, the area is associated not just with immunity, but also with the autonomic nervous system. The relationship of the occipital area to the nervous system is very clear. It is the area of the pons and the medulla oblongata, the area that mediates the autonomic functions and the breathing. Depending on your interpretation of the do, this can be the end of the journey. At do 16, the do is said to enter the brain and the spine ends here. The do, the spine, and the brain have mutual relationship. 
and the do is said to lure, to connect with the brain. Although Nanjing 28 describes the do as going up the spine and entering the brain at do 16 clearly, do 17 is called now men, the brain's door, and gallbladder 19 at the same level is the brain emptiness, now come. So something above the occiput seems to have some sort of um, gateway into the brain also, not just do 16. We tend to think of the head points of the do as part of the channel that moves up as we currently describe it. But in Su 160, the channel is coming out from the inner eye, going to the back of the neck, the inner border of the scapula, and then into the kidneys. What is clear is that the do enters and connects with the brain at the vertex and possibly also at the forehead. We can assume that this is do 20 and do 24, Shen Ting, the spirit court. And then, of course, we do have Yin Tang, the stamp, the seal of the hall that is between the eyes. There is no direct reference to the do penetrating the brain here. The Kerta Tang, a hall, exists in two other points, Blood of 44, Shen Tang, and Ren 18, Hu Tang, the Jade Hall. It suggests that Yin Tang is related more to the mind, as in the heart, than to the brain as a physical entity. So we basically have three connections to the brain, at the back of the occiput, at Du 16 and or Du 17, at the vertex, at Du 20, surrounded by do 19 and 21, which are named be before and behind the vertex, and at the front, at do 24. Do 17, now who, the brain door, suggests that this is where the do enters the brain. Do 18, Jiang Jian, the strong space, reflects by name do 1, Jiang Jian, long and strong. Both have the strength of the bow releasing, neither is on the spine, and they act as like an opening, a prelude, and a coda, an ending to the spine. Do 19, Huo Ding, behind the vertex, is paired with Do 21, Qian Ding, before the vertex, and they imply the importance of the vertex. It kind of has, a, a, you know, like a little servant in front of it and behind it sort of thing. They also reflect by name small intestine 2, Qian Gu, before the valley, and small intestine 3, Huo Xi, behind the creek. When we think of small intestine 3 as opening the Du, I tend to think of it really as relating more to the brain, to the vertex, and small intestine 4 as the point that tends to relate more to the, whole, the spine in the rest of the torso. Do 20, by way, the hundred meetings, implying many, not necessarily hundred. This is the vertex, and naturally one attaches great significance to the top of one's head. I am not sure that Do 20 is necessarily the most powerful therapeutic point on the skull, but traditionally most people would assume that and it is also the space we can most easily visualize, especially visualizing our vertical axis and energy moving from heaven down into the body, as well as moving from the body up to heaven, therefore creating the hundred or the many convergences of energy exchanges between heaven and earth. I use this point primarily for diagnosis. Pressure pain, loose skin or puffiness, or heat here, can be found in depression, especially when there has been some damage or trauma in the lower abdomen. Brand 4 in the lower abdomen is Guan Yuan, the gate to the primary, or the gate to the head. So when the lower Dantian is being damaged at Ren 4, the head can bear the resulting symptoms and the top of the head will reflect that. We see that with postpartum depression, for example. I also use Do20 with REN22 with a 3 bypass cord for any face type symptoms, but especially for sinus issues. Do22, Xin Gui, the skull meeting, suggests by name 
that it is also related to the brain, as in what's inside the skull, and that it has a relationship to do 20, given that they have both our meetings. For me, all the dew points at the top of the head tend to resonate with and can be substituted for do 20. Do 23, Shang Xing, the upper star, suggests our connection to the heaven, to the sky, to the upper star. My guess is that the point is thought of as reflecting our alignment with the upper star, and lack of alignment will cause mental disorders, which may be why it is considered a ghost point. One unusual application of this name is that DO23 can actually release REN3 and bladder problems. REN3, Zhongji, the central pole, also means the North Star. And then one can see how these two points, REN3 and DO23, are related. DO24, Shen Ting, the courtyard of the Shen, is the point I tend to relate to as one might to a ghost point. Since do 23 and 24 are very good for nose issues as well as emotional issues, I prefer do 24. I use the combination of do 24, Shen Ting, and Stomach 20, 44, Nei Ting, the inner courtyard, as a signature to open or to declare an exorcism treatment. Gallbladder 34 would tend to be the closing statement for that treatment because a mound, gallbladder 34, um, is a mound, uh, Yang Ling Chuan, uh, a burial ground. This is where you want to dispose of entities. If you are exorcising an entity out, it has to be either buried or burnt or something, something that one does in a burial ground. What is in between the opening and the closing signatures can reflect whatever it is you feel you're trying to address, but it will often involve Kidney 9, Jiu Bin, the guest house, how I can release guests in, from my house, or be a good resident in my own house, or a good guest in my own house. As a Yin Wei point, or we can use Kidney 9 as a detox point. According to Su Wen 60, the final part of the do, after it descends to the kidneys, goes down to the lower abdomen and genitals, pierces the navel and heart, comes up the throat below the cheeks, circles the mouth, stopping below the eyes. This is a trajectory we currently associate more with a wren. But this description suggests that the face points, you know, the points do 25 through 28, are part of that section of the channel rather than the straight continuation all the way up from the tailbone, up the spine, and to the nose and the gums. But that probably does not matter much. And the points do 25 to 28 are not used very much in terms of acupuncture. So the question of just how they are related to that the branch that comes up the spine may not be of great clinical um, importance. It's also... Um, it, by making them a continuation from uh, all the way up the spine through the back of the head and down the front of the head, it makes one um, circle from the front and the back, which is very useful for meditators. Du 25, Su Liao, is the basic Liao, and Liao is the sound of soaring, the sound of the wind blowing in the bone. Liao points suggest the capacity to concentrate, to emphasize, or to increase energy, just like the wind that is going through a conch will do. It gets concentrated, it gets amplified, it gets emphasized. On the one hand, do 25 does not quite fit here, although there is a sensitive spot that sends a shock-like sensation at the tip of the nose. It is also possible that the name is literally implying the two cavities where air is whirled in and out, the nostrils, as Liao, and also that the nose has a strong connection to the brain. So above it, we have Yin Tang, the seal hall, and below it, we have Ren Zhang, Du 26, man center, with a Liao 
an ability to emphasize or to soar at the tip of the nose in between those two. Du 26, Ren Zhong, the person center, is the one dew point on the face that is more commonly used. Surprisingly, only two points have the character Zhen, person or human, stomach nine, welcome human, Zhen Ying, and Du 26, the human center. Stomach nine, representing the thyroid, suggests a connection to the hormonal system, and that allows us to move through puberty to welcome our personhood. Do 26 suggests that to be human means to breathe and to eat, as it is between the nose and the mouth. The pulse at stomach 9 was used to evaluate the state of vitality of one's life, and do 26 is often suggested as the revival point, resuscitating our human state. Du 27, Dui Duan, the trading edge, is a point I presume to have come from a non-acupuncture tradition, but that might be because I don't really see it as a point to needle, but more as a landmark. And Du 28, Yin Jiao, the gum crossing, is a point I personally would not be needling, but certainly there are many who would. Although it is named after the gums, it is also the root of the nose, which means it shares the influences of the nose as an entry into the brain.